Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I speak to those who have an elegance of wisdom. And you may not think that is you, for there are those here who are literally only feeling this for the first time. There is an elegance in this. The elegance of discernment is here. And this is placed upon you so that you would discern what is true and what is not. A dispensation of wisdom. For all of those who would question themselves or what has happened this day and wonder if they were manipulated with knowledge or energy. To go inside and feel that raw, pure energy of the love of God. Raw in that it is not clouded with a filter. That you can see it for what it is. The appropriateness of all things, including you on the earth, living the way you're living, with those you live with, with, all, with everything you've learned, all correct and proper. You haven't made any mistakes. You think you may have made mistakes. I'll tell you what you have done is to learn. Wiser than you think. The room is filled with old souls. Very, very few of you are not. Old soul would be one who has been here more than a hundred times. Far more. The weather shifts and in the process it brings difficulty. And you may say it will be a good thing to ask spirit for a change, a shift, for rain. And so what I'm going to say to you right now, old soul, do you believe you can move mountains? Mm -hmm. What did the ancients say and what did the masters say was possible? And when they said that, did they point to something to worship to in the process? And they did not. When they told you you could do that, what were they speaking of? They were speaking about the ability of humanity to change that which you don't think is changeable by yourselves with human consciousness. My partner has spent the last hour teaching about the past and giving you an, an option to see past that which you think is bad, dark, even evil. And instead to see the planet as it develops in a way nobody expected. Humans become fearful when there have been no predictions about what takes place. They're just not looking in the right place. But the predictions of the ancients are before you. Humans, let us take a moment all together to see an appropriate change in the weather in a way that would benefit those who need the rain. We have told you that the water cycle is upon you and there will be drought. There will be those who are flooded and they will be in a group like this praying for the rain to stop. <laughs> this is something that is in your control. There is appropriateness in all things. Gaia listens to humanity. And so that it is not so severe, I will guide you in a moment of time where you are going to see and visualize the weather outside this place change. For the weather in the region to change long enough to fill up the reservoirs, those things that are needed for life. 
Gaia has a plan and is going through a cycle which may not support this long term. But this is the now. And we teach that you are in control of it. So with me right now. God is not in charge of the weather you are. <laughs> Gaia responds to human consciousness. That's you. Gaia has brought the water cycle upon this earth because of you. Gaia listens to you. And if you have any doubt about that, I want you to look into the ancients and what they knew and what they did and the ceremonies that created that which they needed. And you will find in them the same thing that you're doing right now with me. Open your mind to possibilities. Not, not what you've been taught. But what internally you know. And see for a moment the ground wet. See Gaia with a smiling face. Hear that which you recognize as the water upon the ground. And the noise the sky makes when it's about to give you that which you need. Hold this vision for a moment. Now claim it as a piece of divinity in you on this planet you deserve it and you need it in all appropriateness if it is right it will take place old souls make a difference on this planet you carry weight with your wisdom do not put a time on it for spirit does not and spirit will not react, nor Gaia, to your clock. Instead, put the love of God on it. That which is appropriate for your life, for now. And then, stand back and create it. Mm -hmm. Listen to it. See it happening. Take a trip to the future where it is happening. Feel it upon your head. Blessed is the human being who knows they are a part of the plan and the system. These are the humans who will plant the seeds for peace on earth. And so it will be. The lesson this day is not an endurance event. We wish to get through part of the series that we are calling the recalibration of all things. We have given you information in the past about the recalibration of the planet, of humanity, even of the universe. Now we speak of the recalibration of dark and light and what it means to you. So I must define before I begin what I mean by dark and light and then I will also define what I mean by the new 2012 energy so that you don't have to have been part of the meeting that preceded this channel for you to understand the subject of the discussion. When I say dark and light to you, what do you think about? I'll tell you what many are trained to think about. They're trained to think about evil, good and bad. They're trying to, to put these things in the appropriate boxes where they belong in three dimensions. What your mythology would teach you about an entity with a tail. Trying to capture your soul and the entities around that and the spirits that might work for that entity. And so I will tell you again, that is mythology, dear ones. It doesn't exist. And you might say, wait a minute, Cryon. Are you telling me evil doesn't exist? And I'm telling you, no, I didn't say that. What I'm going to tell you is that all the darkness on this planet has come from human beings. You don't need anyone with a tail. The darkest of the dark 
can be created by the human being if they choose to go there and power will be given to them because humans are powerful. We have told you before that the light dark quotient of the planet is what is at hand. Those who carry light in a dark room will not have darkness. For the definition of darkness is the absence of light. But if there's so few of those who would carry the match, there's going to be a lot of darkness. And you are subject to that. For you will walk around in the darkness that other human beings have created. And you might call it system. You might call it government. You might call it finance. You might call it health. You might call it DNA. You might call it anything. All is affected. All of it. By the light and dark quotient of where humanity decides to put the balance. So that is the subject. What is the new balance of the new energy going to mean to you and that around you personally today? So the definition of dark and light has to do with the human consciousness quotient. Second definition. The new 2012 energy is that energy which is the marker, a seeming perception of a time frame that you have now passed and are into which gives a confluence of energy of permission and the earth being Gaia begins to shift with you for you and the energy of the planet starts to become different I gave a channel in what you would call Peru we talked about the movement of the feathered serpent that is to say what has been called the centering of wisdom on the planet some have called it the kundalini the kundalini is always associated with movement the kundalini is often associated also with procreation life itself is at stake and you pass the marker you sit in the middle of an alignment that many said would never happen. This is the fifth time you've been through this. And now, dear ones, you're headed for the potential of peace on earth. 23 years ago, we told you this could happen. It might happen. And all that around you is struggling with it. For I'll say this over and over, the old energy of darkness dies hard. Screaming and struggling to keep what they have had and it dies hard so that is the energy that we speak of and the subject is human consciousness balance between dark and light many have called this the duality how does it affect you so we will start with personal and then we'll go to something bigger and then something bigger and we'll end with a prediction we've never given before a potential which has arisen only recently dear ones I am Kryon I give you information of love about the planet and you I never give you information that has not already been generated by the potential of human consciousness Quite often the predictions are given and then they will happen. And you will think that is fortune telling. It is not. It is spirit. In that random chaotic place you call quantum time. Weighing the potentials of what might or could happen. Regarding your lives and the earth. 23 years ago. We saw the potentials for you were starting to develop. And the seeds were being planted for what you are seeing today. And it's beautiful and difficult at the same time. Seeds of change are always accompanied with difficulty. Even the most well balanced human. We'll say, I have found the balance and here's how. And I maintain this balance. And then someone comes along and says, yeah, well, 
we're going we're gonna to change things. And you're going to go, no, I'm balanced. Don't change anything. For it to change means you're going to put a weight on one side of that balance scale and you're going to have to learn to shift over so that you center again. And that's what you're going to be doing and we call it recalibration. But let me tell you what it means. Now I'm going to review a channel I just gave and I'll make it short. An old energy has you protecting yourselves from darkness. If you're a healer, you protect yourselves from those who might have darkness, imbalance, psychological problems, even disease in their body. And you will do a number of things to make sure you're protected. And in the old energy, there was a process, there was a procedure. And I'm telling you right now that this is gone. This is a review. If you're constantly pushing light, darkness does not have a chance. We've said this over and over and now it comes full circle to you personally. Wherever you go, it can't touch you. You listening to me? It can't touch you. The essence of your light is the love of God and you are broadcasting it. Light worker, broadcasting it. There's one thing, not one dark thing that can get in there as long as you're broadcasting. And let me tell you how you could stop broadcasting and open yourselves up to go backwards instead of forwards. And that is if you say, I can't do it. Who am I? I'm not worthy. And there will be many who tell you you're not worthy. They will tell you you were born dirty. Who are you to think you're a God? How many said that to the master of love? While he was suffering, who are you to say you are the king? And I'll tell you who he was. He said he was the son of God and he said you are too. And you can find that in his words in the red letter edition. <laughs> red letter edition. God is in you. All the miracles I do, he said, you can do. He's the one who told you about moving the mountain. Or creating rain. He broadcasted light. And so can you. The meld that I gave my partner four years ago is the meld that you can take today. And that is to say you walk around not with God inside but with God outside also. Let me tell you what that means. We move on to point two. Drama. Anger. Frustration. And there's a lot of it. And when you leave the room, how much of that are you going to pick up? Depends upon the duality, doesn't it? If you are a light worker, a lighthouse on this planet that changes the, the quotient of light everywhere you walk, if what you do here makes a difference, I want to tell you one of the things that you're going to be given immediately, if you want it, power over anger, frustration, and drama. Power over it. And you can't help the people around you. You just can't. They will flail and do whatever they want to, and then they'll go into anger and drama. They may even try to push your buttons. I think you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I know who's here. And they'll do it in order to get control over you. If they can affect you, you've fallen for it, haven't you? If a person can get dramatic, if they can get angry enough, if they can push your buttons, they won the battle. And for years this has been a struggle because the balance of dark and light has always teetered in the middle. And the light worker had to work so hard to gain the upper hand for themselves, not of a, a relationship of give and take, but for themselves so they would not be affected by the other. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Energy is being delivered to you as this earth shifts 
that is going to make it far easier for you to be in control of your own emotions no matter what is around you, no matter what. And you can stand there with all the angels on your side <laughs> and they can try all they want to affect you and you won't react. I challenge you to do this. But there'll be those of you who walk into the workplace in a couple of days and will have a challenge. It is the way of it. When the old balance will still be there trying to assert themselves in an old way, not being aware, you've changed. What happens when one person takes the high road? I tell you, eventually, that road is where the other person will want to be. Hmm? You don't just change you. I will tell you, dear ones, that what you do on this planet is seen by all. Every single small victory at home, at work, on the street, with others, where you walk in a peaceful way where you didn't before, that's a victory is seen by everybody. All of us know it. You ought to hear the applause in the sky. <laughs> when you walk from a place and know you did it. You didn't fall for it this time. <laughs> Some of you know what I speak. Anger. Frustration. Drama. It doesn't have to be in your life at all. You've made the idea up. As you walk from place to place, that you may have to get out of town, get out of a relationship, get out of a job for things to settle for you. Now I want you to rethink that for a moment. <laughs> what happens if things start to change for you personally and the things that bothered you before don't? That changes the game, doesn't it? Now you can be in the same situations you always were. And yet it's completely different. You're not frustrated anymore. You don't get angry anymore. And those around you continue to spin. I'll tell you what will eventually happen. That the spinners will see you. And they're going to come to you in private and say, how do you do it? I wish I didn't have to spin as much. They'll say, I see. I see that you... You've changed. For some reason, you're not bothered anymore. For some reason, you have a smile, and I can see the love of God in you, and I want it. You don't gossip. You don't make other people wrong. You have a, an honoring for all people. When you open your mouth, I can hear it. Something changed in you, and I'd love to know what it is. And that, my dear human being, and only then should you open up and say, I found something. I never thought existed. I found God inside me. That's powerful. Number three, are you aware of how your body is shifting? Allowing for you not only to heal yourselves, but to feel better as you do it and to start not aging as much. The dark light balance, this is complex. My partner goes slow. On this planet, the balance of what has happened, what humans have done, stays here in what is called the crystalline grid. Everything that takes place on the planet, every puzzle you solve, everywhere you walk, stays in the crystalline grid. If there's darkness, the crystalline grid emanates darkness. If there's light, it emulates light. For 23 years, and the last 18 in particular, you have changed the dark light quotient of Gaia. And in the process, your DNA starts to shift. It is quantumly tuned to the crystalline grid. That is to say, it then starts to shift, not only in you, but every baby that's born. You might say that the DNA field looks around at birth. When the child has free choice, that's where it begins. The DNA looks around and picks up the energy that is given to it by the crystalline grid, and that is the energy it will have for life. The kids are changing. They're different. 
Some of them are taking on quantum attributes. That's what's going on. The dark and light balance of the earth is affecting your DNA and that means you can stay here longer no matter what you've been told. I'm talking to somebody who needed to hear that. We've given instructions on pure intent. We've told you that if you start a process of belief where you literally go inside and become one with that which is your innate. Innate is the spirit of intelligence of biology. You know it's in there. Why would you use kinesiology unless you wanted to know something you don't know? Hmm? <laughs> innate is what you talk to when you do muscle testing. Innate is the key. The dark and light balance becomes easier for you to contact your own cellular structure and start a process that will operate by itself as long as you continue to want light in your life. It's time for you to stop giving credit to the almighty outside and give credit to the almighty inside. Just like the masters did. Just like the masters did. Health can be yours. You can stop the aging process, dear ones, to the extent that you have it now. There's no reason why you should not live for 200 years at least. You're going to start seeing something in the next generation and the next generation, and that is extended life without science. It's going to start happening automatically, and it'll be a puzzle for the biologists. Why would humans start living so much longer? And they will say, well, maybe it's nutrition. Maybe it's this and maybe it's that. Maybe it's the lack of disease because we're curing them. They'll have all number of reasons and none of them will be accurate because they don't know the energy of what you've done. Let me talk about government because you're gonna see it. Governments for years even those in some of your lifetimes and those of your grandfather's lifetimes have looked around and said, oh, I see that this country doesn't have the power we do. Let's simply take them. <laughs> and you might say to yourself, well, that, that was then and this is now. How barbaric. And you'd be right. But let me remind you that was about, oh, 30,000 years of history where they did that. That's the history of humanity. Whoever had the most power invaded the one who did not, if you noticed. And that is not in your consciousness. And when you see it on the planet, even on a small scale, it disgusts you, does it not? How can they do that? There's a respect for sovereignty. More than there ever has been before. You don't run across somebody's border and simply take something you like anymore because you have the weaponry. Governments change. Attitudes change. So you might say, well, we licked that one. We've gone someplace, and you'd be right. Well, what about the next one? <laughs> You're going to start seeing a change in the way government conducts itself. Believe it or not, you're going to start seeing that which has more integrity and there'll be those who demand it and those who will shrink from it and there will be battles over it. You may even see in your lifetime the end to name calling during elections. And wouldn't that be something? Where one stands up and says, I don't agree with my opponent, but he's a patriot. And he loves the country. And this is what he stands for. I don't agree with him, but here's what I stand for. And that will have integrity and people will vote for that person instead of saying, he's a bad guy. Look at what he's done and look at the mistakes he's made. And oh, by the way, look at who he slept with. <laughs> That's an old paradigm, dear ones. Well, I want you to watch for this. 
the first one who does it and it'll be so obvious when it happens will be a breath of fresh air in what you call politics and politics will never be the same a new paradigm when you start seeing it in that arena you know it's real you're headed for an election year don't expect much change and I'm telling you that because the old energy is strong it may take four more years maybe even four more when the indigos run for office there will be a shift in the way they run in the integrity that they have they are conceptual and they can see the reaction of consciousness on those they talk to and the ones right now can't so we tell you that the dark and light balance is then going to change what who you elect and it's about time don't look for it immediately but it's going to be there we are going to talk about review on financial systems you have attacked them in the last five years and the historians alive today would say that this is an impossible situation you never could have done what you did now many of you will sit around and those hearing this will say what are you talking about all I know is that we're in a recession and I lost my home. Doesn't sound like something very exciting happened. And let me tell you yet again as a review. If you talk to those who were wise 20 years ago, they will tell you there is no way you can rule over big money. You'll never get ahead. They'll always be in charge. There are conspiracies. There are those covert actions. You will never win over big money. They hold all the cards, all the cards, all the cards. And I will tell you this recession you're in is a recalibration of big money. You called them on it. We told you almost a year before it happened, what would fall first? Insurance. Who it would be? We told you it would be one of the largest insurance companies on the planet, and it was. And on a, it ought to tell you, this was in the works. And this fell over because of integrity. Your bankers are confused. If you've noticed. Doesn't matter what the government says they can do, they're not doing it, if you've noticed. Why is that? Because there's an old paradigm of banking that they're trying to return to. They just can't believe it. And when they do believe it and start the new paradigm, you're going to start seeing an economy that works better than it did. And you will have done the impossible. You beat big money. You beat them. Now that, my dear human being, is a shift of dark and light. Do you see this? Integrity won out over an abundance and power. There'll come a day when the ones who have the money are going to know the only way to get it is transparency and integrity. <laughs> They'll put together win-win situations. You haven't even seen them yet. You won't believe some of the systems that the indigos will think of where everybody wins. And there won't be the, the rich ones and the poor ones. There'll be those that all win in a system. And nobody is left behind. Scratching their heads and asking what happened to my house. It's coming. This country is putting it together. There'll come a time on the planet where there'll probably be no more than five currencies continents will all have figured it out unity is the way of all things it is the structure that creates succinctness in integrity power of trade and ease of working you go from the many to the few and there are fewer details and it works 
That is what the earth is awakening to. It made two generations before this has really been realized and seen and you'll wake up one day and realize what you've done. You put things together instead of tearing them apart and in the process of the next two decades somebody will awaken and say, well, we didn't have a world war. Isn't that something? And we're not going to because everybody is trading with everybody and we've got a balance that works. It's the Pollyanna approach, isn't it? And there will be those who would argue and say, Crying is not accurate. It's only a matter of time. We'll wipe ourselves out yet again. It's up to you whether you listen to them or not. They'll say the earth is coming to an end. Even those who will hang on to the last possible moment to say that December 21 is the end of the earth. This year, 2012. Get their phone number and call them on December 22nd. <laughs> and ask them to join something that you know about now that their drama is over. To join you in planting seeds for peace on earth. Instead of wallowing in that which creates attention, drama. And they may just do it. They may just do it. And now the prediction and then we close. I would not give you this information if it were not in the works. I cannot give you a time frame because spirit has no clock. We don't know what time it is. <clears throat> time is a three dimensional construct of your own creation. It serves you for your survival. It has to be there. In 3D you can't get from A to B unless you have a clock. In a quantum state there is no A to B. In a quantum state, you're always in both places. Clocks do not exist. God has no clock. That is why when you get information about doing something, and we teach this, as many times as we can say, there is no clock. You wait for synchronicity. It's not an instruction to go do it now. Instead, it's a revelation of a potential that you will then create on your own time. You have something inappropriate in your country, it's big and it has to do with big money. And it's going to fall. Perhaps in an unusual way. I cannot tell you when, but I will tell you it's ripe. It's ripe. Years ago, I told you when everybody knows everything, there can be no more conspiracies. You got to see it in another industry you call tobacco. When they were the king. But under the hood, as you might say, the integrity was not there, for they were addicting young people with the product they were selling. And you saw what happened. And it still today happens. It's happening country after country after country. They're realizing the same things, making adjustments. You see today the tobacco grown in your country, most of it is sold to the other countries who haven't figured it out yet. What took place there was a power of integrity over money. Yet again, we bring you this to show you what may very well happen. This is the prediction. Big Pharma is going to have to change very soon. When you have an industry which keeps people sick for money, it will not stay in the new energy. It's not going to remain that way. It cannot. And these things of the past, the old energy, the big money that is involved in this circle is going to be revealed slowly. There are going to be embarrassed faces to think of an industry that's supposed to cure people, keeping them sick on purpose. And they will fall and you'll know their names. And they're going to have to scramble to keep up with the rest of the world who may not have the proclivities they have for greed. 
That's the prediction. When it starts to happen, dear one, and perhaps the movie starts it, dear one, the one that's in the works, dear one, <laughs> I want you to remember where you heard it first. And maybe that will solidify something, that this is real, that the channeling you hear today comes from the source that we say it does. That's the source inside you, free to you, the love of God that loves you because you are family. When you're not here, you're with me. I know your face. I know who you are. I know your real name, not the one you've got right now. That is the truth of the day. Recalibration is upon you. We'll continue this, this cycle of revelation. And many things will be revealed. It's time. That's the energy of 2012. And so it is.